Weather warfare is going on over your head every single day. Stand by. As I said before, you'll believe it soon enough. In regard to the ongoing climate engineering assaults, the question of why, of course, and understandably perplexes those that have not yet taken the time to investigate. Why is our climate being engineered? Though the answers are many and complex, the condensed version is this, for power and control. It's always about power and control. Investigate the U.S. document titled Owning the Weather. The full PDF is available online. Investigate the congressional documents, the presidential documents, the patents, the history of weather warfare and weather modification. It's all there for anybody who chooses to look. If you do so, you'll understand more. Then consider that after 70 years of weather warfare, tearing the climate system apart, and along with many other forms of anthropogenic damage to the biosphere, which many don't want to admit to, all of them impacting the climate system, much of the current geoengineering assault on our planet is for the purpose of masking the true damage already done to the climate system while at the same time inflicting even more overall damage to the process. Again, this is the pharmaceutical mentality for planet Earth. How many examples do we have to see from the human race? This is, this is the mentality of our modern industrial society to very destructively try to treat symptoms while making the core of the problem far worse overall. This is the society we live in. Will our corporate controlled media be allowed to black out issues of critical importance that will come down to this? It's up to us, the citizens of Northern California and elsewhere, to picket in the parking lots until the people at institutions like KRCR and the Record Searchlight, our local newspaper, decide to stop blacking out critical stories and start telling the truth. Again, the weathermen at KRCR, to the weathermen, if you can't talk about the climate engineering issue, tell us. If that's not the case, why would you continue to avoid addressing this issue in any way, shape, or form, no matter how high the community concern grows? We would simply like to know, for example, how you know that the skies will be mostly sunny days in advance, and on such days, the only thing in the sky blocking the sun is what's coming out of the back of a jet aircraft passing overhead. How can a meteorologist predict jet sprayed haze blocking the sun days in advance, unless they're in fact reading from a script, perhaps by the National Weather Service or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration? Both of these government organizations have all their weather predictions modeling done by Raytheon a massive private defense contractor for our government that's neck deep in climate engineering patents. Are our meteorologists simply reading scripts? Why won't they address public concerns? Pneumoconiosis is a respiratory disease caused by inhalation of mineral dusts. Lung damage is caused when the dust particles are toxic to macrophages, stimulating fibrosis. These particles are usually silicates, often mixed with minerals such as coal and iron oxide. Black lung. In simple cell workers' pneumoconiosis, the nodules are 2 to 5 millimeters in diameter, and there is no clinically significant respiratory impairment. In complicated cell workers' pneumoconiosis, Nodules are larger than 10 millimeters, otherwise known as progressive massive fibrosis. It is a progressive disease even after the exposure to coal dust ends, resulting eventually in respiratory failure and core pulmonale. This is a picture of a killer. A killer that takes the lives of coal miners every year. A killer that creeps into the lungs of its victims slowly Cold and ass. insidiously. Cold the ass. contamination in the lungs is so great that the miner is no longer able to work. This contamination or disease of the lungs is called coal workers pneumoconiosis, sometimes referred to as black lung. Pneumoconiosis is caused by coal dust particles that are retained in the lungs. 
Here they are shown greatly magnified on the screen of a microprojector. The miner will be unaware of his condition for many years until the physical symptoms first appear. By then, it is too late. For all too frequently, the disease can lead to death. Since there's no known cure for the disease, the Mine Safety and Health Administration is dealing with technical means to control its cause. At the present time, the only practical way of preventing pneumoconiosis is through the control of respirable dust levels. Once the disease exists, there is no known medical cure. Therefore, health clinics for the care of minors suffering from respiratory diseases will continue to be needed. But this need can be reduced through prevention of the disease by reducing the concentrations of respirable dust to safe limits.